It was a typical cloudy day in Portland when I first saw her. And um, when I first approached her, I felt a bit nervous, um, as I did with most people that I approached and interviewed. Um, however, once I got talking to her, I realized that her story was incredible. Um, this lady's name is Kit, and what I learned from talking with her for the few moments that I was able to was um, some crazy life experiences, and Kit went on to tell me um, just some of the crazy things she went through in life, um, one of them being, um, well, she had really grown up in a poor family and um, just in poverty her whole entire life, and so um, one of the stories she told me was, one, um, having to hitchhike on the side of a rural highway just because that's something she had to do. Um, second, moving from foster home to foster home throughout her whole childhood. And lastly, um, which really surprised me a lot, was how she got into an injury um, this one time and wasn't able to actually go to the hospital because she knew her family wouldn't be able to pay off those bills. And as she was telling me um, her personal story, I realized that she began to tear up. And it was in that moment when she started to tear up that I realized that this is what my project was about. It was about listening to people and really hearing their stories. Um, which leads me to what my project is entitled, Humans of the Pacific Northwest, or PNW for short. Um, just a little quick run through. Um, Humans of the PNW was inspired by um, Humans of New York. And I don't know if any of you guys have heard that um, before um, or if it rings any familiar bells, but Humans of New York is pretty much um, this really, like, really, really famous uh, internet, uh, social media uh, blog, pretty much. And it started by this guy named Brandon Stanton, and he had a mission to go out to New York City and capture portraits as well as the stories of 10,000 random strangers in New York City. So basically what he um, has done since then is update his Facebook and um, Twitter and any other um, social media accounts and um, people are able to see a glimpse into uh, random people's stories. And so because of that, I had followed uh, Humans of New York for a while and had been inspired by him um, on a daily basis, and um, today he has over 10 million followers on his social media accounts. And so being inspired by his stories um, really inspired me to do this project and really um, pushed me to, you know, believe in myself. And I think uh, I've never been a huge talker. I'm a pretty quiet person, but um, it was my love for listening that truly brought this project together. Um, so for b before I start with my goals, I want to um, do a little activity with you panel members. And so as you can see in front of you, um, there is four pictures. And with each picture, there are four stories that go along with them. And so what I want you to do in the next minute, as fast as you can, is see if you can match up which picture goes to which story, and then we'll talk about the answers and such after um, you go through that. Okay, you have 30 seconds left. Mm. 10 seconds. Okay, time's up. How was that activity for you guys? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Pretty difficult? Okay, um, 
For me personally, if I was in your position, I would have thought that this activity was actually pretty hard. And um, here's why. Um, when you look at these faces and you read their stories, it's hard to tell who goes with who because you don't really know who they are, right? You can't just look at someone and be like, oh, I know their life story. And so I want to share the answers with you guys. Um, so one goes with C, two goes with A, three goes with B, and four goes with D. Um, and especially probably the last one was the most surprising one for you guys because you, I'm not sure if any of you guys would have guessed that um, I went through a really difficult breakup with the first woman I fell in love with was actually a woman. And so I hope through this activity you were able to realize um, just kind of like the assumptions that we make about people. But even more than that, um, I want you guys to really um, pick up the different themes that I talk about throughout my presentation and um, just how we can work to um, really make these uh, issues that I will talk about later um, a really big reality in our lives. So with that being said, um, my goals. So my first goal was to interview 20 to 30 people, and I actually ended up exceeding this goal by interviewing 36 people, which was definitely something that um, I was proud of. Um, a second, my second goal was to take portrait photos of the interviewees for my book, and my, which leads to my third goal, which was to make a book on blurb.com that would include both um, my pictures as well as uh, the caption slash interview um, with each person. So that's what my book would contain. Um, and so my first and second goals, um, as I mentioned before, were to interview and to photograph. And you might think that the natural process of this whole um, ordeal would be to first go up and ask someone, hey, can I interview you? And then at the end, take their picture. But actually, I chose a different approach. And um, I actually ended up asking people if I could take their picture first and then ease into an interview. And the reason that I did this was because the famous um, person that runs Humans of New York, that this is the way that he approached it. And so I was like, hey, might as well learn from someone who's an expert at doing this. So I was able to use his skills to influence my own. Um, so first, I would approach someone. I would greet them. I would say something along the lines of, um, excuse me, uh, do you, can I ask you a question? And then if they said yes, then I would go on and proceed to introduce myself. I would be like, hi, my name's Elena, and I'm a senior in high school. And I'm doing this project where I'm trying to go around Portland and capture um, portraits as well as stories of the people who live in the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of people in Portland and this area in general are pretty friendly. So usually it went over pretty smoothly. Um, after I would ask if I could take their picture, um, that's when I would try to ease into some sort of interview. And so usually at this point I would ask, um, is it okay if I voice record you? And I'd take out my phone and uh, usually they said yes. And the reason I voice recorded them was so that I could accurately um, depict every single word that they were saying um, and I didn't have to guess anything. It was just the easiest way. And so after I would interview and record them, um, usually I would start out with some questions that were really basic, such as, hey, like, what are you doing here today? Or um, how's your day going? Um, from there, however, I would usually progress into more deeper questions, um, such as like, what is the biggest defining life moment for you? Or um, what is a struggle you're going through right now? And um, quickly throughout this project, I realized that I, would, I never use the same questions, the same set of questions for each person. Each person, um, I, I kind of almost had to feel the vibe. And from there, I would continue to feel what questions were appropriate at that time. So that's the kind of process of how I, what questions I asked. Um, so after I'd ask them uh, questions in an interview and record them, I would then bring out a release form just so that they'd be able to, um, I'd be able to publish their photos and interview into a book. So that was the purpose of the release form. 
Um, I want to share with you guys one uh, striking experience that I had and that stood out to me a lot. This was actually kind of a funny story because it was one of the first times that I actually went out and interviewed um, just people in general for this project. So of course I was very nervous and I was timid to approach people and I had spotted this couple early on um, in Powell's bookstore in downtown Portland and I something that just like drew me to them was just how in love they seemed you know and you can see from this picture that they just seem so connected with each other and so I had spotted them but um, for a while I just you know walked around Powell's and I pretended to read books or try to fill up my time and um, however after an hour passed I was like you know I need to just get my act together I need to go up and talk to them so after an hour of pretending to read books, I finally mustered up my courage and went up to talk to them. And just um, to keep this story short, uh, their story is very complex and very unique, um, as I found most people's stories were. Um, so actually, this guy is a lot older, significantly much older than this girl. And he is actually the same age as her dad, yet um, they're in a relationship and what makes this even more complicated is that he is best friends with her dad so you can see how them being in a relationship is kind of awkward you know um, however what I learned through their story was just you know despite all that like they still loved each other they didn't care what society thought I mean it was hard but they were able to persevere and um, it made me realize you know I was really so nervous to go up to them but I would have never found out their story if I had just kept it to myself. And so that um, was definitely something that I took um, and was able to process and realize that, that um, you know, I need to push myself out of my comfort zone. And I was really glad that I did because I was able to hear their story. So I've talked about my first and second goals, but my third goal was to create a book. And so the process of this kind of went as such. Um, first, I would uh, edit the photos. I would import them onto Lightroom, which is a photo editing um, program. And from uh, Lightroom, I would then export them, and then I would have these pictures. Um, the second component to this project was probably the most uh, more important side of the project to me was uh, actually um, listening to the audio and trying to piece together people's captions and as I said before I wanted to get exact verbatim and I wanted to get the direct quote and each direct quote would serve as a caption to the accompanying photo and so um, I would then listen to the recorded audio and that was the second component and then my third component was actually forming and um, forming a layout um, for the composition of my book and I actually created my own templates and did it all on scratch through InDesign, which is a um, photo um, layout design program. And so um, from there, I took the photos and the audio and put it together so it could be laid out in a book. And from there, I then uploaded the book onto Blurb. And uh, Blurb is a pub self publishing website that uh, many people have actually used for their senior projects. And so that's kind of the progression of what it was like to produce a book. Um, and I actually had an extra fourth goal that I never explicitly mentioned in my goal sheet, but was something I'd always intended from the beginning, and that was the social media aspect. And as you can see on the board, um, you can see a screenshot of what my Facebook account looked like, as well as Instagram. and. I always knew I wanted to do the social media aspect because I had been first inspired by this project because I had seen it on Facebook or on Instagram and so I only found it fitting to do this and I was actually able to update to a pretty decent amount of followers on social media so that was definitely um, a goal that was able to re reach a broader audience and um, hopefully impact more people just through seeing it on social media. And so all in all, I was able to complete all my goals and actually um, exceed many of them. And so that was something I was proud of, that I was able to 
finish these goals and um, finish them in an according manner. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it was always easy and th this project definitely came with many challenges. Um, first, uh, one of them being just technical difficulties with your equipment and for me, I didn't have much equipment but uh, listening to uh, having my phone out for voice audio and recording people, I actually have this story where I had been recording this guy for I'd say around 20 minutes. His story was incredible and I was so excited to be able to tell people about this story and right when this uh, interview ended I realized I looked down at my phone and it had died. So the whole interview was gone. I didn't know um, what I was going to do because at that point you can't really ask someone to repeat their life story to you. You know what I mean? And so what I did and how I overcame that challenge was just realizing hey like I talked to this guy, he had a great story, um, I might not be able to share it with many people um, through a direct interview, but just being able to talk with him was something that was cool and something I probably wouldn't have known before if I hadn't gone up, been intentional and talked to him. Um, another challenge I had was listening through the audio and the audio could, have, could range anywhere from five to 30 minutes. So if you could imagine taking um, your phone and pressing pause and play so you can type out every three words just so you know it's exactly right. Um, it was definitely a pain, but um, I overcame this challenge realizing that the interview and the story process was the most important part to me in this project. I mean, just hearing people's stories and writing it out and getting it ready for people to see, um, although much of a, it was much of a pain, um, just realizing that it was all going to work out in the end and that it would turn out um, and people were going to see it was what motivated me to get over that challenge. Um, another challenge I had was uploading the book onto Blurb and I hadn't really anticipated this challenge. Um, however, it did take me around like seven hours to just import this book on Blurb because of all the many complications, but as I said before, I was able to overcome this challenge by um, really truly just thinking like, hey, this is, this is difficult, it's kind of a pain, but in the end, I'll probably have my own published book, which is exciting in itself. So that was another challenge I overcame. Um, and the next two challenges, I have specific examples that I want to share about them. So um, my fourth challenge um, as you can see, it says approaching strangers and being rejected. And if you can imagine, being rejected in any sort of circumstance is never a fun thing. But especially when it comes to strangers and you're putting yourself out there and being vulnerable and you get rejected, it just, it's a stab to the heart. You know, it's hard to not take that personally, especially for me, because I'm a very sensitive person. And so um, this guy actually, um, when I started talking to him, he really seemed hesitant and um, it actually shocked me because when I asked him uh, the question what inspires you he immediately blew up at me and he was like I would never answer that question in a million years like only if you had a gun pointed to my head would I answer that question and so that threw me a little back I was like you know this is never I've never gotten this response before and at that point I could have taken two separate um, I could have taken two different routes. One, I could have apologized and said, I'm sorry, sir, um, I will just leave now and you can go on with your day. Or I could have tried working things out with him. And I ended up choosing the second um, of the two options. And I'm really glad I did because after I realized, you know, after that initial shock, um, I just started asking him easier, more simple questions like, hey, like, could you tell me about your business? Um, you know, just more simple questions like such as that. And um, immediately I could see his face light up and he started talking to me more and he was more comfortable. And he ended up telling me about um, what it was like to be a young parent and to raise a kid. So that, um, this challenge really um, taught me to uh, persevere and to not let rejection and that immediate pain that comes with it um, 
affect me too personally, and so I was able to persevere throughout um, that challenge. Another challenge and big um, thing that I went through throughout this whole project was prejudice or prejudging. And I think a lot of times um, we judge people without really knowing their story. And so this is a um, example I want to share. Um, this is in Powell's books. And when I first saw this girl, you know, she has these piercings all over her face. She looks kind of tough, you know, and I was like, I don't know, I don't want to talk to her. She seems kind of intimidating. But when I did start to talk to her, um, she opened up to me about what it was like to be a single mother raising a kid. And she was actually looking at children's books and she was picking out a book for her son who was writing his first book report, history book report um, on a president. And so she just lit up when she talked about her son and it just put into perspective, you know, like you judge someone so hard. Um, you make these assumptions. You say, oh, they seem too intimidating. Like, I don't think I should talk to them. But once you realize your story, everything, once you realize their story, everything about what you thought before changes. And this was something that I really learned throughout this project was really trying to be mindful of what kind of judgments I made on people. and. Um, to judge people less because it's so easy to judge just subconsciously and so overcoming prejudice was a huge um, triumph I believe and something that I want to continue striving towards in life. Um, so what I learned um, first of all definitely just how to communicate with people more effectively and um, actually in my research paper I researched on uh, how to interview someone effectively. And so throughout this research paper, I was able to learn some tips about how to, what would be the correct and most effective way of talking face-to-face, -face, interviewing someone. And so um, through that, there were many things I learned, but I think the biggest thing I learned from that was just trying to embrace silence and I think a lot of times when we're talking to people we're like oh we get a little uncomfortable of when it gets quiet and what I realized through this project was it's not about me talking it's about me listening to other people and so if that meant that it was going to be awkward then so be it but a lot of times through those silences people are just thinking and you need to let them think and so that was something I learned throughout this project. Um, something else I learned was um, just like getting more hands-on experience on what a future career for me could look like and that um, is journalism and just you know going out interviewing people asking people hard questions putting myself out there on the line was definitely um, something that I really gained throughout this project um, and probably the most important thing that I learned was the importance of knowing someone's story and um, I think it is in the moments when we're the most vulnerable and we listen to people and we're able to hear their story that um, everything changes about a person and I believe if we really just listen to each other more instead of just talking all the time this world would probably be a better place and so that was probably the biggest most significant thing that I learned. Um, in conclusion, um, I did accomplish all my goals and published a book, which was very satisfying and something I always wanted to do is self-publish. Um, if I could have changed anything, I probably would have included more people in my book. Um, however, time constraints and everything didn't really allow me to, but I don't believe there's such thing as having too many stories. So if I could have changed anything, I would have tried to include more people. Um, all in all, though, I'm very proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone. And if you would have asked me um, a year ago to go up to someone and just ask about their life story, I probably would have laughed at you and said, no, I, I'm not going to do that. Um, but throughout this project, I really was able to get over the fact that, hey, like, I might be a quiet person, but that doesn't mean that should limit me. And um, because I was able to step out of my comfort zone, um, I learned so many things about other people and um, that was just very rewarding and something that will, I will always um, cherish close to my heart um, and just learning people's stories was really incredible. 
And so I want to conclude um, this presentation the same way that I concluded my book. And so I want to read you an excerpt from my book. So throughout this project, it's been a hope of mine to start removing prejudice from my own daily life. This one shift in mindset has been radical. I've engaged in conversation with people I would normally have been too timid to approach. I've learned stories about bullying, self-image, abusive relationships, the death of a loved one, and I've also heard stories about loving relationships, passions, and defining life moments. I truly believe that eradicating prejudice starts with one person. That person can be you. Thank you very much. And at this time, um, feel free to ask me any questions.